it breaks my heart to say this, but this murder mook versus Big K battle did not at all turn out how I thought it was going to turn out. So Big K, first and foremost, bruh, let me apologize. Let me apologize to you, bruh. And say that I genuinely did not think that this battle was going to turn out the way that it turned out, bruh. Let's talk about it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. First of all, let me just say, ARP salute to you. Salute to you for this event. I thought this event was dope. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was really dope, bro. There was a lot of really significant things, bro, that happened, including Lady J pulling out her, you know what I'm saying, her chest, you know what I mean, to prove whatever her opponent was talking about wasn't true and blah, blah, blah. That's going viral right now. We had some really, really, really dope battles on this card. I'm not going to hold you. I was very pleasantly surprised with Swave Seva versus Remedy Loco. Remedy Loco, let me just say, bro, is definitely on his way to becoming one of those one of those ones, bro. Remedy Loco is so fire, bro. Remedy Loco is so fire, bro, because of his uniqueness, bro. His originality. The way that he delivers his conviction, the way he switches up his flows, his bars, bro. The, he had a crazy rebuttal saying something about he won't leave in the same condition he met us in medicine because Swave Seva had this like vitamin C bar in his, and he had this rebuttal that he won't leave in the same condition he met us in. Yo, Remedy Loco, Remedy. This guy, bro, this guy is good, bro. He is really good. I'm not going to hold, yo, I was very pleasantly surprised with Remedy Loco. I'm not going to hold ya. Swave Seva always, of course, giving a great performance, bro. Crazy third round. Coming at ARP's neck about this beef between URL and RBE, and he wants to be the one to squash it and blah, blah, blah. Even acknowledges and talked about the fact that, you know, that whole situation that happened between ARP and Swave Seva, where Swave Seva says something to ARP, then ARP put the news out on Front Street that Nunu says something to Swave Seva when he was at an event about not being able to ask questions about RBE and murder movers, blah, 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 blah. Even brought that up. Swave Seva, great performance. Remedy Loco, great performance, bro. Charlie Clips versus Rosenberg Raw. Charlie Clips, thank you. Thank you, bro for not coming and playing around with Rosenberg because he deserves that respect. He does, and if you would've came playing with Rosenberg, you would've got smoked because Rosenberg wasn't coming to play with you. Ain't no good fellas around here. What's funny? What's funny? Huh? What's funny? I'm funny? My clown funny? Huh? Fire material, bro, from both sides, bro. Clips even coming with angles. Rosenberg Raw turning his back on ARP and RB, bro. Clips. Yes, bro. Yes. Yes. This is what we talking about, bro. Debatable battle between Charlie Clips and uh, Frozenberg. Debatable between Remedy Loco and Swave Seva. Ill Will versus uh, King Los. And these are just the battles that I've seen. I'm going to go back and watch them. Just the battles that I caught yesterday. Like the last four, pretty much. Uh... Ill Will versus King Los. King Los. King Los is writing. His writing is on a whole different level, bro. Sometimes I'm like, yo, is there something beyond battle rap where a lyrical lyricist can go and, and show off his lyrical prowess, bro, to people? Like, does, does, yo, does, does King Los need to write like a, a book, like, like a, like a Bible book, bro? It's just like, Poems to show off like his because yo King Los's writing is on a crazy level. 
yo, King Los is writing, yo. He was, yo, King Los did this scheme for like the entire first round, bro, versus Ill Will. This entire first round scheme, bro, that kept going and going and going and go, like the Energizer Bunny. Something with like will, car, will alignment and shit like that. He was just going in on this crazy scheme, bro, for the first. I'm like, dog, I don't think that this is going to be appreciated the way that it should be. I don't think it's going to be appreciated the way that it should be. But of course, you got ill will. He's a, 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 a battle rap scientist, bro. This man does it all. Great performance by ill will. Great performance on both ends. King Los even giving us a little bit of a, of a move, of a little bit of a Michael Jackson move, bro, during the back. Everybody did great, bro. Everybody was doing great. I'm not going to hold y'all. I gave that battle 2-1 to Ill Will. But King Los, bro, you're writing. Sometimes I feel like, bro, we don't even deserve to get some of the material, bro, that we get. Because people, it's like some people don't know how to consume and or appreciate something like what King Los does, bro, or brings to the table. He takes that whole lyrical miracle stuff to another level, bro. And he's very proud of that, bro. Dope battle. Now we get to the meat and the potatoes. Murder Mook versus Big K. One of the reasons I feel like this battle turned out the way that it did is because this wasn't even a battle that was really supposed to happen. And what I mean by that is Murder Mook is a legacy battler. Murder Mook typically and usually picks and chooses his battles, kind of like Mayweather, right? In order to maintain his status, his stature, pick smart, big mega opponents when they're hot, take people when they're hot, right? Strategic, strategy type things. This was not that type of situation. This was a situation where the battle rapper was picked to battle Murder Mook. Off bat, that's not good. Off bat, that's not good for business because this means that there's no history, there's no story. There is really no reason for Mook to be battling a big K. But nonetheless, May 6th, Saturday, Divide and Conquer 2, RBE, here we are. Murder Mook versus Big K. Big K, and I noticed this watching the battle, had a very big advantage over Murder Mook. And that's the fact that Big K came up in battle rap knowing of Murder Mook, knowing who Murder Mook is, taking any and everything that could have been said about Murder Mook in the past 10 years in Blase Blah and being able to make material out of it. Big K had an advantage in that sense, bro. He brought up so many things from Mook's past and things about Mook in the culture and blah, say, blah. Mook did not have the same at all for Big K. It's almost like Murder Mook didn't know who Big K even really was up until a month ago. Because Murder Mook lacked being direct. He lacked the personals that were gonna be required in this type of situation, he lacked all those. What I really, really enjoyed and liked about Big K, and this is primarily the reason that I feel like Big K won this battle, and this is coming from me. Y'all know me here at the battle booth, bruh. Mook is my GOAT, he's in my top three. He's not number two or three. And this is exactly why I feel like Murder Mook lost versus Big K. It hurts me to say this, bro. It pains me to say, my heart is slowly breaking right now, saying these things. But Big K had a crazy amount of personals for Murder Mook. I am a huge fan of the personals. I'm a huge fan of the personals, the direct attacks at you and something that you were a part of, and something that you did, or something that you said, and blah, say, blah. I am a huge fan of this, bro. And throughout this entire battle, Big K had personal, after personal, after personal, after personal. Bro, he even had a couple of angles in there about Murder Mook. 
I was over here thinking Murder Mook, I mean, Murder Mook was going to violate Big K because he was going to have an angle for Big K. I thought Mook was going to bring out somebody from Virginia to expose that Big K is a fraud and he's not really who he is and blah, say, blah. This is what Mook had us thinking building up to the battle. I fell for it. None of that happened. None of those angles, none of that stuff that, that I thought Mook was going to be talking about or touching on and blah, say, none of it happened. On the other hand, Big K had a crazy amount of personals for Murder Mook. Once Big K, bro, hmm, in the third round, this is when, this was the moment, right, in the third round where I was like, okay, this is getting dark. This is getting kind of dark for Mook. I'm not going to lie. This is getting kind of dark for Mook, bro. And at this point in the third round, when Big K says this, I can't help but say, bro, Big K is clearly winning this battle, bro. I, yo, not even just winning, right? Right? I said, yo, I think Big K is clearly winning this battle, bro. I can't believe that I'm seeing this and I'm hearing this and I'm thinking this right now. But Big K is clearly winning this battle, bro. This is this is this is what he said. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. He said he had a line about because I don't know if I, yo, don't try I'm just promoting the card ARP. Don't don't please don't try to flag me or nothing like that, bro. This is just a short clip. He was talking about, bro, because all right, <laughs> this this was wild, yo. I was like, yo, Big K, oh my God, I can't believe you did that, bro. I can't believe you said that. That was fire, bro. In the face-off between Murder Mook and Big K, Murder Mook said something along the lines of, you can't teach calculus to a kid. You can't teach calculus to a child, right? Some of y'all already know where I'm going with this, bro. Big K ended up, putting some of the things, and it was a couple of times, material from the face-off into the battle. Now, people do this sometimes, but the way that Big K did it made me get up off my seat, bruh, and say, nah, bro, Big K is clearly winning this battle. He said, and this is not, I'm not paraphrasing, bro, but he said, right, that situation happened in the face-off. Mook told K, you can't teach calculus to a child, right? Big K brought it up in his third round, and he says that he was thinking about it. He remembers Mook saying that, and he was thinking about it. And then he cracked a smile because Mook might end up having to explain math to his child. I didn't say it in the best way, but hold on, 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 hold on. We got to hold on now. Explain that. Explain that. You can't be acting new now. Your whole wave cast is You brought up Rex. Mook had fire material, bruh. And again, in no, it, at no point in this blog am I saying that Mook did not have fire material. Bro, that EBC, that alphabet scheme he had in the second round, bro, he had a lot of fire material. Again, the difference was the personals. The personals, bro. That was the defining difference for me in this battle. They were both fire, but Big K had all of the personals, bro. All of them. Big K did not slack on pulling out every single piece of every everything from his arsenal, bro, to get to the personals. Because that's what the people really enjoyed. I said explain that. You can't be acting new now. Your whole wave cat. You brought up the Rex saying the math that he ain't moved. Well, how about I tell you to tell ARP I said he ain't smack. Nigga, I know you thinking. I got him with his comfort zone now. He ain't gonna be so dangerous. Are you crazy? The doghouse. I'm a married man, nigga. 
that was the line where Kiss, where uh, Moog was talking about. Um, they say that he's coming to the dog's house, and he's like, he's always in a dog house. He's a married man. That was fire. <laughs> I watched former gods be involved in the step stools. A dumbass the whole time he passed the best schools. Deserve no shine for that podcast with yes Jews. You stretch rules, opinion switching like you skip songs. Selective politicking for an image to exist on. You painted Iron Solomon and Zimmerman. You been wrong, but sit down with white women and let them hit you with the egg bomb. You disturbed, Lord Johnny, a big nerd. The plug showed me love, he brought it from Pittsburgh. Even when I cop five, he told me ten birds. The coat so white, Luke let it call him the N word. This is the trailer that's on YouTube. So if y'all want to go check it out, I can check it out. But Here's where that. Here's where Kay's about to go into that. What Mook said in the face-off. This is the. This. This was the point. This was the turning point for me, bro. This was when I was like, Nah, bro. K is winning this battle, bro. I can't. I can't. I can't, bro. I can't. As much as I want to sit here and fight for Mook, bro. I can't, bro. I said you this, yo, yo. I said you disturbed, Lord Johnny, a big nerd. The plug showed me love, he brought it from Pittsburgh. Even when I cop five, he tossing me ten birds. Coach so white, Mook let it call him the. And I heard you on the face off say something that was actually foul. You asked me how to teach calculus to an infant, but I ain't get it until after a while. Then I thought about that scar on your forehead, and I started cracking a smile. Cause one day you might have to sit down and explain math to your child. But back to these raps. Yo, Big K, yo, <laughs> yo, that's, that's still giving me goosebumps, bro. I don't know if y'all could see, that's, that gave me goosebumps, bro. I said, nah, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, bro. I did not, yo, I underestimated Big K. I underestimated Big K. I underestimated Big K, bro. I didn't think that he was going to be... I didn't think that he would do especially something like that, bro. Take something that Murder Mook said in the face-off. Completely flip it like this. And tie it to a real personal. And an angle. And make it... And make it what he made it. Big K, I'm sorry, bro. Let me apologize to you. Let me apologize to, to Big K's family. I apologize. I will never underestimate you again, Big K. I can't believe, bro. That, yo, it's, it, it, yo, it feels like Big K just did something that nobody could do, bro. Not even Loaded Lux. I don't even think Loaded Lux... Bro, people got Mook beat in Loaded Lux twice. Tay Rock couldn't get him out of here. Geechee couldn't get him out of here. We give him a random matchup, bro, with Big K. And in my opinion, bro, Murder Mook clearly lost this battle, bro. Luckily for Murder Mook, this isn't or wasn't a legacy battle. Luckily for Murder Mook, and this is part of the reason why I feel like Murder Mook isn't, doesn't seem like the normal Murder Mook in the situation. Luckily for him, this isn't a legacy battle. So this isn't even really a battle that mattered that much to him anyway. Or to the culture. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people that wanted to see Murder Mook lose. Bruh. Unfortunately for Mook. There's a lot of people that wanted to see him lose. And now they finally could take, and now they could finally use the situation, you know what I'm saying, to try and paint that picture. You know what I'm saying? To try and make Mook look like 
somebody that he's not. You know what I'm saying? Mook is still Mook. But Big K, I feel like, just became an even bigger dog, bro. Big K just went from... Uh, I don't even know, bro. I don't even know, man. Big K, congratulations, bro. Good work out there, my man. Let me know what y'all think of that situation, bro. You already know what it is. It's your boy Drew coming at you live and direct from the battle.